So this code has both the form and the code to process the form in it. So when the page first loads, I get a blank form uh, where the user can make their choice. But right now, it's also showing the results. Okay? So, you know, that's kind of not a horrible thing, but it's kind of something that we want to clean up. Other thing that we want to clean up is not to show the privacy policy that I had mentioned before. But at any rate, the user picks this, clicks play. It tells them that they rolled a one and a one, and therefore they're a winner. So good for us. All right, we can play again. Seven. Yeah, we lost. All right. First thing I want to do is I want to put the images on there. I want to put the images on the page that correspond to the rolls of the dice. All right. Here's how we're going to do it. All right. And I had this suggestion last time for people in lab. And I also had the suggestion, I think I threw it out towards the end of class. And I wish I would have like done that, followed my own suggestion from the beginning. But we're going to follow my suggestion now. So I want to display these two dice. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to start out by just displaying two dice statically. In other words, I'll show two ones. That's, that's what I'm going to show, regardless of what they roll. I'm going to show two ones. All right? And we'll do that as a start. All right? We'll do that as a start. We'll then go in and change it to make it dynamic. All right, so I could have done that approach with this stuff too, the results. Results, user selected. I could have just hard-coded a choice there. I could have hard-coded the values of the dice rolled. I could have hard-coded the results. All right, but I didn't. All right, I built this slowly. I could have hard-coded it, then go back and look at it and decide what part of it needs to be dynamic, what part of it needs to be coming from somewhere, where, where we're going to pull data from somewhere. Because if you notice, all these pages really are, are a mix of plain old static HTML with data that comes from different places. And most of the time, where the data is going to come from is what? It's going to come from what? The model. The model. Very good. All right. So the model is the supply of the of the uh, of the data for this dynamic page. It's the supply for the dy dynamic data for this page. And the page itself simply grabs data from that and displays it, like we've done here or here. Here we've done something else. We've grabbed from a view data set of fields for like the title. But mostly we're going to be grabbing from the model. So, the model has a job, the razor page has a job. The model's job is to do what? Is to declare the property that we're going to use, and then somehow fill it in. In this case, it's filling it in on the post function. In other words, it fills it in on a post back, because we don't have any data prior to that post back. All right. So that's the model's job, is to declare the data that's going to be used, and it's going to fill in the data sometime. It's not always necessarily going to be on a post back. It could be on a get. All right. It could be on a load, on a page load. Maybe we pull data in and, and, and or create data for this. But it's going to be probably, you know, one of several places. For now, it's on the post back. So I'm going to go and I'm going to start off by hard coding two images. I just happen to have six dice images here for the six dice. I'm going to go in 
and I'm going to put that where? Do we have a folder already for images? Yes. Where is it at? In the WW root. Very good. The WW root has the stuff that doesn't like need any sort of server side stuff. Okay. Um, it's the um, it's the, the the stuff. Yeah, that, that doesn't really need it. So I'm gonna go here. And I don't think we need, well, I don't know, that might be used in one of our other generated pages. So I'm going to go, I'm going to grab these dice in here. So I have the six dice images. All righty. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to hard code it on the page. I'm still going to keep the numeric values of the dice rolled, right? Maybe I'll keep them, maybe I'll get rid of them. But for now, we'll keep them. And I'm going to hard code the images. So I'm going to put a paragraph. Image, IMG, forget my HTML here. All equals image of dice one of die one src equals how do I refer to the URL of that file in the images folder need to put the path and what is the path We're going to start out at the root. Go down there to images. And then we're going to put the name of the image that appears here. And that's the first image. Same thing for the second image. It's nice only be, to be fighting one battle at a time. All right. What I mean by that is that it's nice to get the static HTML down, have it look in the way that we want to, and then all we have to do is make this dynamic because the image tag works the way that we want it to. The only wrong thing is, it's always showing the dice value of one. Whereas we're going to want that to be dynamic and to show the value that the person actually rolled. So, let me run this. Oh, while I'm at it, I'm going to take care of the privacy notice too, because that bugs me that I have to do one more click. I have better things to do than to click and get rid of the privacy notice. Where is that at? That is at here. So I run this, go to the high-low dice game, it shows, that's not what I expected to see. Oh yeah, I did say D2. I thought I said D1 for both. Okay, so it works. It does what I thought. Now, of course, if I play, it's always going to show one and two. Ooh, got it right. All right, now we just have to make it dynamic. So, what's the steps in making it dynamic? There's two things that we have to do, or two places where we have to do things. We have to do things in the model. We have to do things in the razor page. Now keep in mind we could do this a couple different ways. All right, so I'm going to pick a way. Maybe you can think of a slightly different way. Good for you. All right.
first thing we have to do is we have to supply the data, right? We can't display the data if we haven't supplied the data yet. So we have to supply the data and make it available for the Razor page. So I can't have the Razor page display the data until I make the data available. And where do we make the data available? In the model. So I'm going to go into model and I'm going to create two string properties called image one and image two. Okay, now I have to fill those properties. Okay, how do I fill those properties? What is the name of the image? How can I tell what name the image should have? I'm, I'm pretty sure you know this. Come on, it's the end of the week and I'm struggling here. Help me out. Programmatically or yeah, programmatically. I see what we're getting at, and you're right, if we really didn't know what it was, we could write some code to figure it out, but you know what? We know what it is, right? We, we stack the deck. We know that all the images are in, number one, in the images folder, and number two, have the name D, the number of the image, uh, the number of the dice, dot JPEG, D something dot JPEG. Well, we already have a property that says the value of the dice which is D1 and D2. So all we have to do is we have to concatenate D, the value of the dice, dot JPEG. And that'll form these images. So. Image one equals D concatenate the value of D one concatenate JPEG. That's the name of the image. What's the name of the image two? So now we have, we've, we've, we've declared the data, and we have filled in the data. Now what do we have to do? We have to display the data. And displaying the data is going to take place in here. So how do you suppose we're going to do that? What are we going to replace with what? We're going to replace the source value. Can we do that? Can we just display? you know, stick in data from an attribute? We'll sure find out, won't we? All right. So I'm going to say instead of my instead of d1.jpg, what's it going to be? At model. We have to say it comes from the model. And where does it come from the model? It comes from the model. in a field called image one. Pretty sure this will work. Am I 100% sure? Pretty sure it will work. Let's give it a shot. Didn't blow up. That's a good sign. We got broken images there. 
Ooh. Why do we have broken images there? Yeah, we haven't played the game yet, right? We haven't played the game, therefore, the uh, the the image strings uh, in the model are empty. These only get filled during the on post method. The on post method only happens when we post back to this page when we click the submit button. Therefore, first time through, there's nothing in the images, but. You know what, that's sort of okay because we're going to clean that up in a minute, right? We had talked about that, about cleaning up the code to make uh, uh, the results not show until after we have, uh, until after we have uh, actually ran it once. Okay, so I'm okay with that for now. I'll go and I'll say I'll pick seven. And there we go, two and three. Yay, I'll pick low, and I win. I'm on a roll. Ooh, winning streak over. All right, questions about this? Notice, a, like, a pattern, all right? Uh, you know, a, 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 a recipe here. The model declares and fills the data. The razor page displays the data. All right. So if I have a new piece of data that I want to display on my screen, I, there's something else I forgot that I want to do. I want to do the. Uh, I want to keep track of how much the person has. All right. In other words, I want to actually, actually keep track of their bet, right? And give them points if they've won, take away points if they've lost. So we'll do that as well today. All right. So we might not get everything today that I had planned, but we'll we'll get to that. All right. So as a new piece of data, at the very least, I have to hit the model, and I have to hit the razor page. I have, to, I have to hit the model to declare that property that I want to display. I have to hit the model to fill that property with something. And then finally, I have to um, change the razor page to populate uh, or to display that, that piece of data. All right? Pretty straightforward. Next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the results the first time I play this. So if I go back and visit this, I don't want to see the results until I've played the game. Now, we probably could do this a couple different ways. I'm going to take a real shortcut. All right? I am going to create a class in CSS to hide it. All right? I'm going to create a class in CSS to hide it. You could probably do it different ways. I don't know. This way, this way, how do I want to say it? This way is is what way maybe you wouldn't think of on your own. And this way will demonstrate a little bit more about how we can use data from the model within the razor page. So I'm going to create <coughs> two classes in my CSS. I'm going to call one of them First time. And I'm going to set the property to display none. What does that mean? It means the first time through, we're not going to display the results. 
I'm going to set a different property, different different class rather, as post back. I'm going to make the display block. Couple of things about this. Notice the names I gave to these. Now, this is like a finer point, I think. I could have called them visible and invisible. All right? Because that's really what they do. First time makes it invisible, second time, or postback makes it visible. So I could have called that that, but I chose not to. Why? It's better to describe why you're using a class than what you are making the class, how you're making the class change the appearance of the element. For example, here's probably a better example than this one. All right. Let's say I have an error message that I'm going to display. All right? And I'm going to display it in red text. I could make the class name red text. All right? And then if there's an error, I could change the class to be red text. What's the problem with that? Of calling a class red text? Red text and italics. That way we handle people with that are colorblind. What's wrong with calling it red text and italics? You might use it for something else other than the error message. Well, that's not a problem. It would put it red text and italics. Yeah, but if you like, um, if you want to make changes, or okay. Uh, Okay. You're right. It has something to do with if I made changes. What if I made changes to that red text and italics class? You don't know what it's going to change because you don't know where you use that red text. Okay. Possibly. Or if you change it to a different color, it doesn't make any sense. De definitely. I think if you put all three of your answers together, you have a good answer. All right. That if I simply call it red text and italics, I could lazily go and put that tag or put that class on other things. Here, okay, this isn't an error message, but I want it to be red text and italics. Now, never mind the fact that that would be confusing because it would look like an error message, but I could do that, all right? If I go and change that, thinking I'm only changing the error messages, I could be changing something totally different that I've also applied the class to. And finally, what if I change the errors to be big text and purple? All right. I have a class called red text and italics that makes the text big and purple. It doesn't make any sense. It would be really confusing. So you use names for the class that relate to the purpose of the class. Now, what's it going to make the, the, the text look like? You can tell that by looking at the CSS code, but rather why you're going to use it. Then if you go back and do what you suggested, put that error text on something else, then that's your own fault. All right? You said it's error text. You get what you deserve. All right? So in this case, I was debating calling it visible and invisible, but I thought, well, no. What is the purpose for this? I want one style for the first time we're viewing it. I want the second style for a post back. So I'm going to go and I'm going to set these to that. I'm then going to go in my here and I'm going to put a section class equals at model dot class. So we're doing this backwards, but forgive me. Well, no, I lied. I'm not going to do it backwards. I'm going to follow my own advice. All 
I'm going to hard code it. I'm going to hard code it originally to be first time. So, boom, I run this. show the first time. <coughs> well, problem is it doesn't show the second time either. Or the third time. Guess what though? It's in there. It's in the source. If I look, do a view source. It's in there, but the style set to first time, all right, so, which means we can't see it. So what do I want to do? Again, I'm following the formula that I did before. I hard coded it the first time, got that to work. I could hard code the postback class, make sure that that works. Now what I want to do is I really want to make it dynamic. So how am I going to make it dynamic? I am going to create a variable for it in the model. And I'm going to make a public string that says results class. And I'm going to initialize it to what? What do you think we're going to initialize it to? First time. Why? Because until the postback has a chance to change it, I want it to be first time. Now, each subsequent time, if it's a post back, I'm going to change that class to post back. Now, you could say, well, it gives, it puts out those results the first time, it just hides them. I'm okay with that. So there's some code that's hidden on the page that we could probably write this not to display that code at all. But we display it and make it hidden. Or we put it out and make it hidden. I'm okay with that. But in addition, this shows that, looky here, just like we could make the source of an image, we can make the class from a CSS file. We can make that dynamic. So we can pop in this little at model dot something anywhere we want to. <coughs> I bet we could change a tag. All right, this is an H3. Bet I could change that, or this is an H2. Bet I could change that to an H1 after they played the game. Would I want to do that? No, of course not. That's stupid. But I could do it, all right? So I could do this. I could create a, in the model, something called tag. And the first time through, it's going to be H1. And for each post back, it's going to be an H3. We'll make it real dramatic, real visible. Now I can say, all right, pop in there. At model tag. 
All right. So the first time it's going to display as an H1. Each subsequent time it's going to display as an H3. First time through, displays as an H1. I play it, displays as an H3. All right, why am I going to these, why am I showing you these? Some purposeful, some maybe ridiculous. I don't know, would you ever need to do that? Maybe, I don't know, all right. But the point is, is that you can. You can plop in these at model dot something anywhere you want to on the page. We could change it from a post to a get if we wanted to. All right, we could change it, could change the value of options. We could get the value of options from somewhere. All right, now that I definitely could see doing, pulling from a database and setting the value of an option. So we could literally change anything about the page. All right, I could change the all attribute. Instead of saying die one and die two, I could actually say the value of the dice. All right, so I could pop in that at model whatever anywhere I want to. If you think about it, that's very powerful. You just need something in your model to declare the attribute and to fill it in. Questions about this? All right, let's think a second. How am I going to keep track of what their winnings are, all right? If you remember, they get paid for sevens. They pick sevens, they get paid $4, four to one. If they get paid, if they pick one of the other ones, they get paid one to one. And if they're wrong, they get deducted one. So. I want to display somewhere on the page what their balance is. So let's do what we've done so far. I'm going to put up here a balance. I'm not going to put in the results because I want to show them the starting balance when they first started this game. So I'll go put a paragraph. Let's say I want to start them off with a hundred. Okay. Start them off with 100. So I hard code that in. And again, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to illustrate. I could go and just make sure, yeah, that's the way I want it to look. If not, I could go and change it. All right. And maybe I don't want it there. I want it, whatever. That's good enough for this example. That we have the balance. Could even be two people working on this, right? Could be someone that is good on HTML developing the HTML that has all these hard code fields and then a back end programmer doing the stuff in C sharp and then telling them, by the way, replace 100 by at model dot such and such. That would be pretty easy to do even if someone didn't know C sharp or Razor pages very well, right? If you just knew HTML, if they told you what to do, it'd be easy to do. All right, so you could have someone who's had very strong web skills doing this part of it. You could have someone that has very strong coding skills working on the other part of it. So anyhow, we hard coded it. Let's go and put a model, put in the model. I'm going to initialize it to 100. And then I'm going to replace it here with at model balance. Okay. Run it again. Now you might say, why am I running it now? All I've done is like change it for a variable, I, I'm, not, I'm not calculating the balance yet. I'm not adding and subtracting. That's okay. Do it a little piece at a time, make sure it still works. Okay, yeah, it still works. 
doesn't do anything, but the display part works, and it's coming from the model. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and say if they pick low and it's low, they win. If they pick low and it's not low, they lose. If they pick 7 and it is 7, they win. If they pick 7 and it is not 7, they lose. If they pick high and it is high, they win. I did something wrong here. If they pick high and it is not high, they lose. Okay, let's see what this does for us. Shows 100. I pick low and play. I lost. So it shows 99. I'll pick low again and play. I lost. It shows 99 again. Pick 7. And lost. It shows 99 again. What is going wrong? It didn't write kind of the first time. Right? I mean, it did it right the first time. I bet I lost. Boom. It took off the amount. All right? But then it sort of didn't do it for the rest of them. What do you think is going on here? It's getting set back to the initial amount every time. How do you think we can fix that? You have a fighting, well, let's put it this way. I would be surprised if anyone knew the answer to this, but I'll give you a chance anyhow. So don't feel bad if you don't know this. Because this will involve using something that you probably have not used before. Pardon me? Nope. Maybe a session variable, but there's maybe a simpler way. There, there, yeah, there, there's a ways that you can do it, but a very straightforward way, and the way that you probably haven't done, is a hidden form field. What is a hidden form field? What does a hidden form field sound like? A field that's hidden, right? All right. So, what is a form hidden form field? What's the code look like? Input type equals hidden instead of input type equals text. Otherwise, it's the same. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use, and the reason I do a, a, the reason why I'm picking this as opposed to the other one is this is like a really low overhead solution. All right. I'm going to create a hidden field, put the value in of the balance. All right. And I'll then use that, and I'll know the balance each subsequent time. So, let's go, let's make it happen. For debugging purposes, I'm going to make it just a plain old input field. And the value is going to come from the model. Should 
Repeat that, please. Shouldn't that be the placeholder? So it's not like setting them. Repeat that. So the value would set the value of the input, correct? Yes. The placeholder would be different. I don't know what you mean. Bear me out, and we'll see if, if I answer the question. OK. So initially, this is going to set it to the value of the balance. All right. So I run this. Balance shows in both places as 100. Pick 7 and play. Both places it shows 99. Both places it shows 99. Still have the same problem. Only difference is now we can do something about it. Because now, I can say my model can initialize it to 100, but I can say balance equals how do I convert something to an integer, a string to an integer? Convert to int. What do you suppose I'm going to put in here? Whoops, I already blew it. I, I gave you a spoiler. Well, I'm going to retrieve the value from the form. So I'm going to retrieve the balance the last time. So I'm going to say so now I'm storing a balance in that text field. When I go to play again, I briefly initialize balance at 100, but then I change it to what it was previously. So if it was 99, it's going to be 99 now. Now I do all the math. All right, and then display the results. So let's see if this works for us. All right, field, text field shows 100, the balance shows 100, just the way I want it to be. I play it. I got it wrong. The balance shows 99 and my text box shows 99. Now when I submit it again, it's, not, it's going to use the value in this text box as the starting value for balance. So instead of subtracting or adding to 100, it's going to subtract or add to 99. 98, so I lost again. 97, because I lost again. Yep, I won. It's back up to 98. So this is working. All I have to do is change this to a hidden field, and it will work. Do keep in mind there's a bunch of ways to do it. Depending on the kind of situation it is, the security involved, I might not be comfortable with storing a hidden field if it was something really secure. This just being a, a light game. No one's going to be collecting any money from me at this game. You know, it's just for your amusement. I don't mind storing it as a hidden form field. Just like I don't mind making this simply invisible. It's not that big a deal. In other cases, that, that's the simplest way to do it for what we know right now. Let's put it that way. Questions about this? So, what are some more secure ways to, to hide these things? Maybe like a session variable. 
uh, such a variable would be one. Um, we could possibly do something with the class um, to make it persistent. Um, not sure if making a static variable would help there. I don't know. Um, the one that comes to mind will be a session variable. But again, we haven't talked about session variables yet. So I, I would do it this way. You know, this is a good way to do it. Good as any. All right, let's see. What have we not accomplished that we said we were going to accomplish? Or that we said we, we wanted to accomplish? The last thing I think relates to this function having a lot of stuff in it and maybe being hard to read. So we could possibly break this down into different sub-functions. We could also create a class for the high-low game logic if we wanted to. I can't imagine having more than one page where we would play this game on a website. All right? It's a nice example, but it's not that great of a game. All right? So therefore, I can't imagine having it in a bunch of places. Oh, we'll play this on this page, and we'll play it on that page. But let's imagine maybe something else. Let's imagine a shipping calculator where you order products, and it gives you an estimate of how much it's going to cost to ship. All right? It's very possible that you might want to put that on several different pages. All right? Very possible that you might want to put that on several different pages. And it might be kind of complicated code. All right? I actually, in the early 2000s, worked for a... Uh, consulting company and one of our uh, one of our clients was a chemical manufacturer and they ship chemicals all over the world now certain chemicals are hazardous of course and therefore there's regulations about shipping them to different places and there's costs associated with shipping them to different places so the shipping calculation for that company was incredibly complex, especially the international shipping. Certain countries you could only ship to a handful of locations. You couldn't ship it to any city in the country. You could only ship it to certain places within that country. So their calculation, their shipping calculation is very complicated. And there's a potential that we would want that on several different pages <coughs> to help people out and help them estimate what the shipping costs would be. That kind of complicated logic you don't want to have to duplicate. You want to get it right once and then use it everywhere that you're going to use it using the same base of code. So in some cases we could even create our own class. We could separate that code out into its own class. All right, And in that way we would, if we wanted to play this game in two places, would have the ability to do that. In this case, the game. In another case, uh, shipping cost or whatever. I really don't want to get into the, that today, and I really don't want to get into, into the refactoring today. So I'll do something I don't do real often. I'll call it a day now, all right, 15 minutes early. All right, and go work on this, work on the projects, that's the program that's due, and so on. I will be grading anyone that's turned something in. If you've finished any of the labs, turn it in. Remember, what's the drill? Turn it in, bring it up on your machine, and call me over to grade it. All right, uh, that's all I had today.
Uh, I'll go unlock the lab, then I will be in here to get my files, and then I'll be back in lab.